Okay, let's talk about the ABCTE multiple subjects exam. And specifically, we're going to be talking about some of the math that you uh, very well may encounter on the ABCTE multiple subjects exam. And what we're going to do in this video is take a look at a practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for this particular exam. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are in fact, preparing for the ABCTE multiple subjects uh, exam. And of course, uh, ABCTE is a uh, program. It's uh, the American Board for Certification of Teacher Excellence. So it's a, um, it is an excellent program for those of you out there to become teachers without having to go back to school, etc. cetera. So uh, anyways, it's nice to see um, that, you know, in this day and age that there are different routes to become a teacher uh, versus just going to school full time. Um, there's a lot of things where people can switch careers and become a teacher. But again, uh, you still have to obviously uh, pass a lot of these certification exams. That doesn't change at all. So before we get going with this practice problem, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed many online math courses to include an ABCTE multiple subjects math test prep course. So there's various ABCTE um, certification exams. I uh, developed a uh, test prep course for the multiple subjects math um, exam, and I would classify uh, the kind of math that you likely may encounter there as more like advanced uh, high school level math. Okay, so more than just basic algebra and geometry, you're going to have to know a uh, good amount of um, more advanced topics like trigonometry, logarithms, matrices, etc. So, if you want to um, check out my test prep course, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to that in the description of this video. But uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get to this practice problem. All right, so um, again, if you're fully ready for uh, this particular exam, this should be pretty easy for you. So the way I like to do these little practice videos here is uh, give you an opportunity to uh, solve the problem. Maybe think about it. If it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't come to mind exactly what to do here, you know, pause the video, think about it, and try to do it on your own. Definitely don't go research how to solve a problem like this. Just think about, hey, could I solve this uh, algebra problem? Okay. Now, in a second, I'm going to give a hint, and then obviously I'm going to solve the problem here in a um, uh, short period of time. So, if you think you know what to do, go ahead and do it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a hint here. So, clearly we have some sort of variable, okay, and with some sort of power. So, let's suppose I had, um, let's make this easier. Let's say I had 2x squared. Let's just eliminate that fraction as an exponent and make an easier version of maybe what might be a, a similar type of problem. So, if I had this, could you solve this problem, okay? So, let's just go ahead and solve this, and then we'll get back to this problem. So, here is our hint, right? Uh, we want to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 2. So, that leaves you with x squared is equal to 3. So, now if you think about this, we're saying some number squared is equal to 3. So, how do I solve this? Well, the way you solve this is you take the square root of both sides. So, x is going to be equal to positive and negative 3. Now, this situation, because the power is a squared, this is what we call a quadratic equation. However, when we're dealing with fractional exponents, then it gets to be a little bit different. But uh, the basic process here is something you're going to be following. But what really, you know, what it comes down to specifically in this problem is if you don't know exactly what to do, then, you know, uh, there's not going to be any amount of hints <laughs> that I can give you without actually showing you how to do the problem. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and solve this guy real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide 2 by both sides of the equation. That is going to leave me with x to the one-third power is equal to 3. All right, so when I'm solving the equation, what I want to do is just get x by itself, right? Now, x by itself is really x to the first power, right? So when you say, oh, I'm going to solve for x, 
Well, that x is really to the first power. We don't, but we don't write things x to the first power. We just write it as x. But uh, it is important for you to know that x is x to the first power. Now, why is that important? Well, let's take a look at this situation right here. I have x to the one third power. Okay, I'd like to have x to the first power. So what can I do to this one-third power to get it to the first power? Well, what I can do is I can take that and raise it to the third power. In other words, I could take x to the one-third power to the third power. And if you know anything about powers, and let's do an easier example, x cubed squared, the rule is you take the outside uh, exponent, we multiply it by the inside exponent, so this is going to be x to the sixth power. So following that principle, if I have x to the one-third power and I multiply this 3, one-third times 3 is equal to 1. So if I take this one-third, x to the one-third power, and I raise it to the third power, I'm going to end up with x to the first power, or simply x. So I have a, a strategy to you know, get rid of this x to the one-third power and get to x. But here's the deal. In algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. So in this case, I, um, I'm i taking something to the third power, so I have to take the right-hand side to the third power. So I'm going to have 3 cubed, okay? So which is what? That's 3 times 3 times 3, which, of course, is 27. All right, so that's basically how you solve this problem. This is a very simple, okay, uh, um, what we call rational exponents, fractional exponents type of problem. But when you're facing, um, you know, various problems in uh, algebra, there's a lot of different type of equations, okay? There's a quadratic equations, rational equations, radical equations, logarithmic equations, uh, systems of equations, and all of them are different, okay? And here we're dealing with rational exponents, and this in and of itself has its own set of rules. So the main idea here is, you know, on this particular exam, there, you know, you're covering a lot of high school level, advanced high school level mathematics, meaning that you're going to have to really immerse yourself in, um, you know, a lot of math to be fully prepared for the ABCTE multiple subjects uh, math section, okay? But, you know, the way I feel about it is this. Uh, don't look for shortcuts. Just immerse yourself in a good study program. Really make that commitment because it's going to benefit you in two ways. One, you're going to increase your chances of passing this exam. And two, uh, it's just going to make you a better teacher, okay? And you're really going to, you know, comprehend and learn the material. Just think about... You know, you in the classroom, are you, you can't, would you expect your students to take shortcuts? You're going to really want them to understand, um, you know, math or the various other uh, subjects that you might be teaching. So you got to kind of follow that. But if you haven't seen the type of math that's on this particular exam, it's considerable amount of mathematics. And it, it takes time to review, even if you took calculus in college and a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, no, I, took, I, was, I was awesome in high school math and college. I took, you know, a year of calculus. That's great. But here's the thing. If you have been away from math for a long time, uh, you still have to go back and review. OK. And even if you're taking calculus, calculus is not high school level mathematics. You're not going to you're not going to be doing calculus problems on this particular exam, but you're going to have to be doing a lot of you know, high school level, again, mathematics, dealing with logarithms, matrices, systems, uh, geometry, etc. So anyways, hopefully this video helped you out. If you were able to solve this problem, by the way, without any assistance and understood why you were doing what you were doing, that's very good. Okay, but again, it's not complete verification that you're ready for this exam across the board, at least with respect to math. If you struggled with it, don't panic. Okay, just use it as feedback. Um, two, you know, construct a good uh, study plan and go from there. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my ABCTE uh, multiple subjects math test prep course in the description of this video. All my courses have taken me seven several years to uh, 
uh, build. And I, what I do is I go in and do uh, research on that course, the kind of math that's on it, and I try to come up with that kind of custom curriculum uh, that will teach to what's going to be on that exam. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, hopefully consider subscribing. I, I have currently um, hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you prepare for this particular exam, but I'm posting uh, new stuff all the time. So if you want to see that, uh, please consider subscribing. If you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. What's your uh, kind of career path? Like, obviously you're, you're um, striving to become a teacher, but are you coming from another career? What have you, you know, how long you've been out of college? Uh, you know, what state are you looking to teach in? What's, you know, motivating you to become a teacher? I will say this much. Um, I do a lot of uh, videos on teacher certification exams. And one of the things I like to pass on about being a teacher is, and um, you've probably heard this before, but I'll kind of uh, just throw in my two cents, is becoming a teacher is one half of it is all the certification, professional knowledge, just like, you know, passing these tests and going to college and all that kind of good stuff. That's part of it. The other half is just learning the art of teaching. And that would include how to deal with classroom management, how to deal with all the other stuff, grading, parents, all those type of things that, you know, you can hear all about them, you know, uh, in classrooms and other teachers. But until you actually start doing them, you know, um, you're not going to truly uh, comprehend uh, the full scope of what it means to become a teacher. So give yourself time to learn and gain experience. Every single teacher has to go through it. Nobody becomes a great teacher. There's, a, I think, people that are have that talent to teach, but becoming an actual classroom teacher, that's a different deal, and it takes experience. So give yourself time and latch on to those veteran teachers that can really help you with all those things that they don't teach you in a book. <laughs> so anyways, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your teaching uh, goals. Hopefully this video helped you out. Thank you for your time and have a great day.